since my last video I have looked at this and a couple of improvements that I want to make mm -hmm. bringing up her eyelashes uh, uh, so I know uh, we branched them didn't we let me see where are they there branched I want to reshape and I've decided that you see this like take these yellow bits I decided that I want to make a little eyelash oh and do and do that's not what I want to do bring it up even bigger so I can get hold of it I wanted to make a little eyelashes bigger all right and because we've already, uh, I'm going to wheel that back down. Because we've already done it, uh, I click on that one and I'm going to have to wheel that up a bit bigger. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to do it separately now because we've already kind of done it. Yeah. So I decided, let me click off that and click select and come back. Yeah. I did want to make her little eyelashes a bit bigger, so I've just done that one. So I'll save that. That's brilliant. Okay. Now everything else we did is perfect. Yes. Yeah? So the next thing that we need to do in the lesson is uh, grab hold of your um, <clears throat> USB stick or uh, you know uh, whatever you use to transfer it to your machine. I'm just going to pop my USB stick in, and then you hear it go boop de boop. So that's in now, and uh, I will just put my hoop back on, uh, come out so we can see it. Yes, that's all brilliant. And uh, then uh, my machine takes JPX files or JEF files if I was buying a file, but the best form of file, because I'm using it directly from the source, the EMB file, uh, I will then go and write it up here, write to file, yeah. It'll bring up my USB stick eventually. I got a lot going on, so it might take a little while. Right. So now it's brought up my flash drive, my 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 uh, USB drive. This one I'm calling uh, LE3, uh, and I'll go and open up my flash drive and come down to Lovelock. Yeah, and. Uh, there's stuff on here. Oh, Elephant. I'll open that one up. And I will say, yeah, write it to there. That's where I want it to go. And basically, as soon as that's closed, it's done it. Okay, so I, again, will now save uh, my thing. I can, uh, I think, yeah, I can close down the digitizer. And I'm ready to go. So I'm going to take... Uh, so now, uh, four by four inch hoop. Now, mine is uh, probably a lot different to yours. Uh, but what we need to do now is obviously uh, uh, put the stabilizer in the hoop. Now, this is a no-show mesh stabilizer. They call it no-show because it's really pliable and you can leave it underneath an awful lot of um embroidery uh, so what I will do is just place it over my hoop plonk my hoop in I use my hoop is always pretensioned yeah that's another video I, st I keep saying that but that is another video and then once I've hooped that in and it's lovely and taut uh, because I pretensioned the hoop uh, I can just cut that off that's enough get rid of that I'm ready so now there is my hoop ready to go. Here is my fleece fabric. I'm making a nice grey elephant and I just need to go and get uh, uh, the required size uh, ruler to cut this. I'm using, let me take this out of the way for a moment. I'm using uh, a four by four hoop. So I've got a sweet pea six by six ruler. Uh, now. Uh, to successfully make this, 
even well it's just we did establish earlier it's just over uh four inches on mine it may not be on yours but if you've slightly changed the parameters but i will always make it bigger than it should be rather i'd rather trim it back than uh end up with it not being right in the bloody first place in in sorry i beg your pardon not being right in the very first place so i've also got a little helpful little thing like this it sticks on my rulers and uh i am just well i could go over there a bit more save material there is a salvage on this as i don't want so now holding that still using my titanium cutter i do suggest you buy titanium blades they may be slightly more expensive but they will last twice as long right so i'm cutting one bit of fabric oh lots of mooses oh, wasn't pressing hard enough one bit of fabric why wasn't i pressing hard enough let's have another little go at that put my ruler back on sort it out do that again press much harder this time and there we go right uh one six inch square and then i want i'm gonna plonk that along there on that edge and cut <laughs> yeah i wasn't cutting cotton so i wasn't pressing hard enough <sighs> and cut another six inch square so those are the two six inch squares for my four inch hoop that i'm going to require now you could cut them at five inch that'd be fine but i just have to have one that suits me all right so that's the next thing we need and now we can go over to the um sewing machine and start i think this is the best angle to show you from uh i think at the moment let's just hope it works out for me right so uh i've put in a silver gray uh this one if you can see it silver grey on my thread stand uh, I've loaded the needle I've got um, bottom line in my white bottom line 68 thread underneath yeah so now uh, if you can see can you see on the camera I think you can I'm not sure but I yes you can see that I put my USB stick in picked up LE3 which is what I'm doing now and I can press this flower, this fl tiny flower, big flower, which will show me the next stitch it's going to do. Which is, I, I've got my scissors and my tweezers here to cut off little bits as we go. Uh, so the first thing, I'm doing it all in grey at the moment until I need to change colours. No matter what, the, I mean, you have to regard that everything we do is our colour stops, okay? But it's going to be all grey at the moment until i get to the eyes and what have you so um i'm going to press start and it's going to do the very first line this outline which is going to show me the placement line in my hoop to put down my fleece so i'm just going to let it go down now because it's silver this is probably not coming out uh very clear on the camera go to it and stop okay take ruler i'm just going to pull that thread out so it's free to do the next bit take my fleece square actually that's the better one you take my fleece square the nice fluffy side up yeah and I'm going to place that over that outline of the elephant, making sure that I've got at least a um, quarter of an inch or half an inch all around, like, free. Because this is a stuffy, so once we finish doing it, we have to leave a quarter of an inch uh, 
seam allowance so it's got to be much bigger than the actual thing okay so now i've done that the second stage is press start and it's going to just go now on the blue and repeat that entire thing again okay to hold down our fleece Lots of people at this stage try to take things down and what have you, but basically, I don't find the need for it yet. Right, so it's stopped. Uh, I did notice, and this is, I, I do tend to trim as I go. I did notice that there was an end there, so that's fine. So the next thing it's going to do is the placement line for the uh, applique fabric that I'm going to use for the ear. So I also noticed, just pulling it up, there's an end there. So I, I do trim my ends as I go, right? So that is the amount of space or the amount of material that I want for that applique shape. I'll just go and get it. Okay, so I've got a little tiny bit of pink fabric that I am going to lay on top of that shape. Right, so I make sure that I am, um, uh, you know, it's covering that shape. That's brilliant. Press start and it's going to do that stitch all over again. And stop. Now here is, well, first off, I'll cut, that's my actual sewing string. So I would just cut that tiny little um, ender and then using my favourites, if I can find them. Where are they? Oh, come on, who's got them? Oh. Where have my squizzers gone? Dunno. What a nice mystery, isn't it? Never mind, I'll have to use these. Right, so I'll bring my hoop forward, uh, or you might have to take your hoop off, doesn't matter. I can just bring my hoop forward towards me, so I can get at it. And then, this is trim in place. So I will just go right in, to the stitching, cut into the stitching, and then just cutting the cotton, holding the cotton up, and just gently following it around with little tiny cuts. Yeah, little tiny cuts are the best. You just, you're just trimming, and I'm trying not to cut the fur fabric, you know, the fleece fabric. So if you hold it up, you should be able to trim quite nicely all the way around, yeah? So you see, I've done that now. If you think you've got a bit, mm, that's a bit too big, well, then go round. But you're looking to trim about two millimetres away from the stitch line, yeah? So now it's going to do a zigzag to really hold that fabric down. Notice it all the time, I'm not changing thread, no matter what the colours say, because I know the overall result I want is uh, grey. So that's done a little zigzag all the way around. I will just cut my loose thread, as I always do. Yep, get rid of that. Uh, and then now the next stage is 
the satin stitch all over the top. which at the moment is doing an even finer zigzag around just to make sure that everything is incorporated and I can cut that switch out it. Now you see it starts on the actual uh, Sutton cover stitch. my squizzers. Now, isn't that gorgeous? Uh, so that is trim in place um, applique, all right? That's trim in place applique. Uh, if I hit start now, it's gonna go up and do the other ear in exactly the same way. So I'll stop the video here until we get to something that you haven't seen. I've turned the camera back on now because I'm just finishing the second part of the ear but if you can see here on my screen because it's all in grey now uh, it is going to go straight on from this and do all the other grey bits that we programmed in so I thought well I, I must turn the camera back on so you can see because it is now all the same colour all these features so far on the elephant are the same cam are, are the same uh, thing However, I am going to stop it now because there's something else that I wanted to do. Oh, you little sod. There is something else that I wanted to do before this actually happened. So I stopped it, right? Just one minute. I stopped it because I wanted to show you this. Now, this is, it's like, like thick cling film, okay? It's plastic and it's like, well, you know, it's hardly anything. I've cut a square, here's my square. You can see how flimsy it is. There's my square. I cut a square of it and because we're using a fleecy type material, I am just putting that square over the top of my embroidery i should have done it before i did the last eyebrow but when you use fleece uh or fur fabric or anything else 
to prevent your stitches i'll press start now so it'll go on where am i i move you um i press start now so it'll go on and start stitching it's to prevent your stitches from sinking in to the fleece fabric now if i was using a uh, much longer um pile like proper fur fabric or toweling i gonna do something else but this is the best thing for uh even something like fleece i will try and put up uh, under, uh, underneath the video in the more info so you can drop down what to buy if you haven't got any okay uh, this is wash away actually but uh, to be honest with you with all these stitches in it it, it, it just pulls away you you'll see at the end and yes again you could sell a tape this down but as you can see as long as you're watching it well that's fine but I don't know whether you can see already but it just stops the stitches sinking in to the fur fabric or the fleece fabric I'm just very gently saying, well, there you are, don't, you know, don't go anywhere. I, obviously, I'm not preventing the oop from moving, but I'm just like, oh, there you are, with my fingers. Now this one is the one that we did as a branch. You see it started at the top instead of at the bottom because the software figured it out for itself which was the best way around it. And now, oh, now what we're doing. Oh, oh that was the foot, yeah, I understand. That's the other top of the foot that we did in stem stitch. And I'm going to stop it there. And let's finish this one. I just stopped it because this is a time for me uh, where, because I don't want these uh, threads to get caught up in anything, where I will go and I'll trim. See? You need a good pair of uh, oop, pointed um, tweezers. That's my thread. Where's the other one? Then? So I can go up and pick up threads from other parts like this. And Grab all of them and just trim threads as I go. Yeah, oops, what did I do to that? Trim threads as I go. I got another one there so that they don't get caught up under any further uh, embroidery. And I'll press start, and obviously, now we're going to do the bridge of the nose of the elephant which is our uh, reduced satin stitch.
it still amazes me that what you write on the programme, that your machine will absolutely stitch out exactly how you want it. <laughs> so if it doesn't stitch it out how you want it, it's your fault because you haven't done it right in the first place. <laughs> I love it, absolutely love it. See things like this come to life. Right, now it's going to go off and do the satin stitches on the lower part of the elephant. Because obviously this is all in grey, or in my case a kind of silver. It's not metallic, but it has a metallic look about it when it's done. This, it, I love this uh, thread. I mean, I'll have to say where I got it from. It, it's 40 weight, it's not metallic, but it, it gives such a sheen to it, you'd think it was metallic. Stopping that there, <sighs> bit of a problem, what's going on, yep, here's a problem, uh, it lost the thread, I heard it, I don't know whether you did, but you heard the, the change in the sound of the machine, I did, I heard crack crack going on and so I know that went wrong there so now I go look at it and think well where did you go wrong well you went you did that one all right you did that one all right so this happens sometimes so it's good for you to know you know if your machine actually goes wrong uh, I got a little cross up because I pressed the middle of that so I got a cross up to say where it was so I will now back up my machine yeah I just back that up because it's okay there I'm moving it forward now the next stitching it was supposed to do was this one, which was where it, I, I am, well I'm here, I'm just going to take off these odd ends, yeah, but uh, I heard it go wrong. So I know lots of people walk away from their machine, I don't, I do babysit my machine, so I'm pressing start, starting from this position at the top of that leg, I've been re -threaded. Thank you. That's much better. Moving on to start this lot again. Now, as soon as this uh, grey is finished, I'll bring it forward and have a good look in case it has not worked as I want it 
absolutely everywhere. Have I got a stitch to pull on there? Mm, not sure. No, it looks good. Well, I'm not sure. No, my more. No, I'll look at that more closely in a minute. Okay, that's brilliant. 